All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome into the Zoom room as we introduce Aaron Neesmith and Peyton Pritchard to the Boston Celtics organization. We'll start with the jersey unveil, which we can do now. So if you guys want to take the jerseys and stand up and rotate both sides, and then after this, we'll have both players available for questions. You guys can keep, keep holding that for a couple more seconds. All right, thank you very much. And now we can open it up. Questions for Aaron and Peyton. Start with Chris Ryan. Hey guys, welcome to Boston. I uh, appreciate you guys doing this and just wanted to, to get your takeaways early on what it's been like to be, you know, around uh, some of your teammates, the organization and your first year expectations here in, in Boston for both of you. Um, you know, it's been fun so far, you know, just being able to come in and learn from the greats and learn from people who've been doing this for, you know, a very long time. It's been a lot of fun being able to just come in and get better every day. Yeah, it's definitely been an exciting time. Um, you know, been starting workouts and getting going, but just trying to be a sp uh, sponge and soak everything up and get ready for the season. Obviously, it starts really quickly, so just trying to learn fast and get going. John Corrales. Hey, Aaron, um, I was just wondering how your foot was and if you're 100% ready to go for training camp. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be good to go. I've done everything uh, so far workout-wise. Um, you know, it, it's, it's good. It's 100% and uh, I won't miss a beat. Ashley Conklin. Peyton, can you kind of describe what the last um, eight or nine months have been like from you going from winning a Pac-12 championship on your senior night, and unbeknownst to you at that point, that was your last college game, and then how have you kind of refocused yourself to prepare yourself to get to the position where you are today? Um, it's kind of hard to hear you, but did you ask about my, my, the end of my college career? I was asking, you know, kind of like how you've refocused um, since – having your college career cut short, you know, winning the Pac-12 championship and the win over Stanford and then not having an NCAA tournament, and then how you've kind of refocused and prepared yourself to be in the position where you are today. Um, you know, how it ended is it was disappointing, not, not being able to finish, but to end at, the, at Matthew Knight, winning a Pac-12 championship uh, was special. It was a special way to end. But for me, after that, I just kind of refocused uh, my energy towards getting ready for the draft and then obviously preparing for next year and getting ready to, to help a team um, compete and try to win games in a championship. Taylor Snell. Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to ask both of you, what does it mean to be drafted by an organization with such great winning tradition as the Celtics? And how exciting is it knowing that you'll have the opportunity to contribute to a contending team right off the bat? Um, you know, it's like uh, great expectations. So, you know, it's nothing different that uh, Peyton or I have gone through, you know, it's just continuing to come in and work as hard as we can, be a sponge. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen next season. So just continuing to do whatever is asked of us. Definitely. Um, like Aaron said, uh, just come in, compete. Uh, we're looking forward to next year. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a great team and have a chance. Um, but our focus is on just getting better and competing and start. Tom Westerholm. Hey, Peyton. There was a there was a video floating around of uh, I think it was you and you know a bunch of other guys uh, prospects um, playing at the Hoop Summit, and Jason Tatum was in that too. I was just curious if you knew Tatum, if you know any of, or for kind of both of you too, if you know any of kind of the younger guys on the Celtics, and if you have. Uh, you know, kind of prior relationships with them that might help with the transition a little bit. For sure. So me and Jason played on, the, like you said, the Hoop Summit together um, and other USA, like uh, Colorado Spring, Springs events. I played uh, Jalen Brown 
twice, um, and once in high school, once in AU. And then me and Carson and uh, Romeo all played on U19 USA together. So definitely have a connection with some of these guys already. And so it's, it's definitely pretty cool. John Corrales. Um, having seen that the Celtics have lost Gordon Hayward, there's an opportunity there for someone on the wing. I was curious to both you guys, what do you guys think that you can do to help fill that void right away? Um, you know, we don't really know. We've never really played in the NBA before, but just continuing to do what is asked of us, continuing to compete, continuing to work hard, and, you know, just go out there and give our best effort. For sure. Uh, all we're worried about is just getting ready for training camp, competing, and um, obviously trying to help a team win, earn minutes, and that's all we're worried about. So, Gary Washburn. Go ahead, Gary. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. A uh, question for each of you guys. Aaron, what was the importance of playing for, for Coach Stackhouse last year, a guy who's obviously an NBA veteran all-star? How was that critical to you? And Peyton, the importance of coming back for your last year, how did that help you? Um, it was monumental being able to play for a guy like Coach Stackhouse, you know, 18-year NBA veteran. Um, he's done everything at this level that, you know, a lot of young guys coming into the league want to achieve. So um, being able to have that blueprint and being able to learn from a guy like that for, for a year and just learn his tendencies and how he approached the game was definitely big time. Uh, for me, coming back from my senior year was definitely made a big jump. Um, I went through the draft process at the end of my junior year and just kind of took some feedback. Um, and just worked on my game, uh, went at it, and uh, was mentally and physically prepared for, for my senior year. And um, our, team ha our team had a lot of success. So it was, I think it worked out for me in the end to go back for my senior year. Scott Iceberg. Hey, Aaron, how's it going, man? Um, wondering how just the acclimation is over a week now to you know becoming an NBA player and to Boston, and does it help at all that your brother has been at Harvard for four years? I mean, has he helped you kind of around Boston and whatnot? How we doing, Scott? Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it, um, I asked him for some like restaurant recommendations, so you know, just that's been his kind of way of you know helping me introduce me to Boston. But it's definitely been good so far. Uh, being able to hang out with the teammates and being able to get in here and work with those guys. So it's been a fluid transition for sure. Jared Weiss. So a question for both of you. Now that you're in the pros, you don't have to deal with other things besides focusing on basketball. What are parts of your game that you can really utilize the resources and time with you that you have now to expand your game that you think you're really capable of that maybe the public doesn't know about? I'm really just going to keep working on every area of my game like I did in college. Um, now, obviously, all, all of my focus and all of our focus can go towards basketball, recovery, everything that can help our game. And, you know, obviously in college, you got to deal with uh, schoolwork, going to class and those certain things. But now being a professional player, all you have to worry about is basketball and taking care of your body. So for me and I think everybody else, we're just looking forward to that being our main focus all the time. And that's all we have to worry about. So. It's going to be special. Um, yeah, kind of pretty much the same thing as Peyton said. You know, we don't have school anymore. We can spend 24-7 on basketball. And, you know, so it's just really working on the things to help contribute to winning and help them become a more complete basketball player. Chris Gasper. Aaron, this question is for you. You know, on draft night, you described yourself as an absolute sniper. What gives you the confidence that your shooting will translate from the college level to the NBA level? Um, you know, it's just a body of work, uh, you know, the repetition. Um, for me, nothing changes. My warm-up doesn't change. My form doesn't change. Uh, my footwork doesn't change. So as long as I continue to work on those things and continue to perfect those, uh, perfect those attributes to my game, uh, there's no reason for my shot not to translate from one level to the next. Adam Kaufman. Peyton, I'm just curious uh, how familiar you are with the recent history with the number 11 for the Celtics and how you chose it. Um, yeah, I know some past players that have worn it. Um, obviously, some really good ones. Um, for me, it's just 
I obviously growing up, I was always number three and number three is retired here. And so I had to choose the next number that I liked the most and 11 was the one I chose in that aspect, so. All right, we have time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Matt Langone. Hey guys, a uh, question for both of you. Um, obviously with the pandemic, um, everything is in kind of a time crunch right now. And uh, you know, the college season ended months ago and um, you're not gonna have the benefit of playing in a summer league or anything like that during, you know, leading into the NBA season. Is it intimidating at all to jump right in how, how you're going to jump in with training camp in a week or so? Or what's kind of the, the emotions you guys are feeling kind of getting right into this NBA season? Um, you know, that, that's kind of that's kind of why we're here right now, you know, to kind of get ahead of the curve, try and soak in all that we can and try and make this uh, fluid transition as fast as possible because it's going to be a big jump for uh, both of us going in. You know, like you said, we didn't get summer league, so we didn't get to get our feet wet. But um, being able to compete with these guys right now and learn, with, learn from these guys right now will be a huge advantage to us both. For sure. I mean, you know, it's going to be a quick learning curve, like Aaron said, but um, – I think we're both looking forward to it, get to jump in and get right to it. Um, during this quarantine, we've both been training hard and getting ready anyway. So it, it'll be nice to get right to training camp and start the season and just start preparing right away. Chris Grenham. Hey guys, a uh, question for both of you. In your first couple of days here in Boston, have you gotten a chance to meet and hang out with any of your new teammates? And if so, how has that, how's that went? Uh, it's been good. Uh, we've been hanging out with uh, Grant and Carson. Um, Grant has us playing some board games and, and stuff like that. Um, he acts like he's been winning. He has not. So for the media aspect of all that, he has not won much. <laughs> um, but it's been fun. I mean, uh, it's just looking forward to meeting all the guys and getting to know everybody. All right. We're going to wrap it up right there. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.